Join us on an adventurous journey as we explore some of the most remote places on the Earth. The Galapagos Islands were where Charles Darwin first discovered evolution and changed the way everybody looked at the world. When travelers first got there, they thought it was hell on Earth. The smoke from the volcanoes and giant tortoises put doubt in their minds. But the Galapagos Islands are home to some of the rarest species in the world, such as the blue-footed booby and the marine iguana, to name a few. There are also many other unusual species. When our journey begins, we will take you to the hot desert lands, wonderful biodiversity, and the beautiful tropical waters of the amazing Galapagos Islands. The Galapagos Islands were first discovered in 1535 by Fray Thomas de Berlanga, the Bishop of Panama. His discovery was simply an accident. He had been sailing to Peru when the currents claimed his ship and took him to the Galapagos Islands. It is also possible that the islands were discovered 60 years earlier by Tupac Upangi, the Inca king, but no one really knows. The Voyage of the Beagle with Captain Robert Fitzroy sailed to the Galapagos Islands on September 15, 1835. The captain with his companions, including a young naturalist named Charles Darwin, conducted tests in the islands. Darwin's discovery has led to his theory of evolution and his groundbreaking origin of the species. The Galapagos Islands are located in the Pacific Ocean, 604 miles off the coast of Ecuador. The Galapagos hotspot is a volcanic hotspot responsible for the formation of the Galapagos Islands. Lavas from the Galapagos hotspot have an unusually large section of upper mantle material, and in the sharp contrast to the more primitive lavas of Hawaii, Fernandia Island completely overlies the Galapagos hotspot. Due to its current volcanic activity, the island does not contain much plant life and has a relatively gray ambience. Isabella, at approximately one million years old, is the youngest island of them all. The island was formed by the fusion of six shield volcanoes, Acedo, Cerro Azul, Darwin, Ecuador, Sierra Negra, and Wolf. All of these volcanoes are still active except for Ecuador, making it one of the most volcanically active places on Earth. Another interesting island is Española, being the oldest island with an estimated age of over 10 million years old. However, this island is slowly dying, gradually becoming a rockier, more barren land with little plant life. And now for an interview with John, a naturalist guide from the National Park Service. What is your name? Uh, my name is John. John. And what do you do here? So I'm working as a naturalist guide. Naturalist guide. And how long have you done that for? So I've been doing for about 12 years. Do you like it? I like it. I love it. You I have a it. lot of passion for nature. And what is it about the Galapagos Islands that attracts you? So, uh, my family were born here, I was born here, and I love these places, and I'm going to be here for the rest of my life, taking care of these uh, uh, fragile ecosystems. So what does it mean to take care of fragile ecosystems? Take care means like uh, conservation, working in conservation, uh, the biodiversity, the vulnerable biodiversity that we have in these uh, fragile ecosystems. Very important for the whole world. And what do you think about tourism here? Well, we have, uh, nowadays we have 160,000 visitors per year, but we, I think we are going to be looking for a better number, I mean a lower number, uh -huh. and not impacting too much to these uh, fragile ecosystems. Yeah. And how, what is the economy based on here in the Galapagos? Uh, tourism. Primarily yes. or yeah, primarily. exclusively? Yes. What else is there here? So uh, fishing as well. So uh -huh. fishing that is, uh, I could say nowadays, 25 percent. You know, people dedicating to that uh, job. Uh, it's only for local people. You mean local fishermen allowed to be catching some marine resources uh, from the Galapagos Marine Reserve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what is your favorite part about being here on the Galapagos Islands? You mean my island? Yes, your yes, island. Uh, my favorite one is Española because of the 60% uh, of the species that exist in Galapagos. And um, if you were to see the future of the Galapagos Islands, are you hopeful? Yes, yes. Uh, 
So the nature is very wise. That is that is that is what I could say. Very wise. So nature is renew renewing. You know, every time the all the parts of the island. Like we've been talking this morning about the plates. You know, the islands. So one day the islands are gonna be going underwater, but coming new ones from the hot spot. You know, renewing all the time the nature. It's very. Wise. What concerns you the most? Uh, concerned most, you know, like one day the endemic animals will disappear from here. That's why we are doing a great job, you know, with the Darwin Center, the National Park Service, these partners in conservation and the whole community all involved, you know, to protect these beautiful places. Great. Well, thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome, sir. In the Galapagos Islands, the weather can go to rainy and dark to hot and dry. June to November, the temperatures can get around 20 degrees Celsius near the sea. This season is called Garua. Garua brings cold winds and rains lasting for a long period of time, along with thick fog. December and May are the warmer temperatures. The sea and air temperatures rise to 25 degrees Celsius. It's sunny and hot. El Nino, which happens sporadically through the years, radically changes weather patterns. El Nino creates important warming temperature fluctuations in surface waters for the tropical Pacific Ocean. El Nino is usually a major part of floods, droughts, and other extremes in the weather in a wide variety of places around the world, including the Galapagos Islands. The Galapagos Islands are home to many species of birds. Two of the more unusual and remarkable ones are the blue-footed booby and the Galapagos penguin. The blue-footed booby is the clumsier of the two, but has great diving abilities. This 32-inch bird can hit the water at 60 miles per hour from a height of 330 feet and plunge 82 feet into the ocean to catch its prey, which is usually eaten underwater. The Galapagos penguin is the only penguin found in the equatorial waters. These penguins are endangered. They fall prey to many different aquatic and terrestrial animals, as well as to the strong sun. The Humboldt Current brings cold water to the Galapagos, which has helped these birds adapt to the tropical climate. The Galapagos sea lion is slightly smaller than its Californian cousin. Feeding mostly on sardines, the sea lion travels 5 to 10 miles to hunt. This is when they come into contact with their fiercest predators, sharks and killer whales. Pups have a strong bond with their mothers, and pups have been seen together napping, playing, and feeding. The Galapagos tortoise is the largest living tortoise native to seven of the Galapagos Islands. Fully grown adults can weigh over 660 pounds. The tortoise's diet consists of cactus, leaves, grasses, fruit, and vines. To determine dominance over a female, the two competing tortoises will compare heights. The taller mates with the female. Frustrated non-dominant males have been observed attempting to mate with other males or boulders. The tortoises have an average life expectancy of 150 years. Our conservation. The Galapagos Island are a wonderful and amazing place with lots of colors and lots of animals. Many of the animals are found nowhere else. It is a great place for tortoises but it is causing some problems. In addition, native species of the Galapagos are having a hard time with the non-native species such as dogs, cats, horses, and cattle, which outcompete the endemic plus native species. Recently, in 2006, UNESCO wrote their concerns about invasive species and other severe threats to the ecosystem of the Galapagos Islands. It is a mystical place rich in biodiversity. Species have evolved separate from the mainland. In 1959, Ecuador preserved 97.5% of the islands as a national park. Other threats are, for example, pollution and island species. In 1990, the islands became a whale sanctuary. They are protected now. Their islands are a jewel, and they need to be heavenly managed and protected in perpetuity.